I'm going to take you back to 1922 inside of a Smith Wigglesworth meeting on this episode. You're going to want to keep watching. Hello and welcome to Long for Truth. My name is Daniel Long and I have on my computer screen a newspaper called the Sydney Morning Herald. The date is right here. Let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see it. Uh, May 5th, 1922. I was doing some research a couple of days ago and I came across an article about Smith Wigglesworth and it just described one of his meetings and I thought it would be interesting to share and so that's what I want to do. Now the article is uh, over here. Still on the same paper, I just wanted to show you the front page over here, what that looked like. But uh, we're still on in the same paper, the Sydney Morning Herald, May 5th, 1922, right here. This is it, Faith Healer, Scenes at a City Meeting. If you've never heard of Smith Wigglesworth, he is popular in charismatic and Pentecostal circles. He was a very violent man, and uh, in his meetings, he would do things like punch people and kick people. Because he believed that sickness was a part of demonic possession. A person had a demonic spirit if they were sick. And like John Alexander Dowie, he also denounced doctors. Um, and he'll even do that here in this meeting. So let's go ahead and take a look at this article right here, and you're going to see some stuff I think that'll really interest you here. So we're going to start right here at the top, and I can actually zoom in just a little bit more so you can see it a little better there. There we go. A brilliantly lighted chapel crowded with men and women and children, mostly well-dressed. Here and there, Salvationists in uniform and interested yet critical-looking clergymen in distinctive garb. On the platform, a, a stout, clean-shaven man, apparently in, the for, in his, apparently in the 40s, his most distinctive feature, a somewhat full upper lip and jaw, he rather reminded one of Horatio Bottomley. Now, I have no idea. I have no idea who that is. Horatio, Horatio Bottomley. He is Smith Wigglesworth, the Yorkshire evangelist, who claims to be a medium for divine healing. He is praying, Oh God, let us have life, life, life tonight, to which the congregation responds with fervent amens. A young man with a nasal twang, reads the first verse of a hymn, which is heartily sung. Another young man has several announcements to make. He concludes each with a quaint, God bless you. Those who have with them handkerchiefs, which they wish to have anointed with oil, are requested to leave them in the vestry. They are to be placed under the pillows of the sick. O oh, love that will not let me go, and a trembling tenor is then sung by a third assistant, the evangelist reads the fifth chapter of John's Gospel, descriptive of the healing at the Pool of Bethesda. Then, in response to a request, six hands are held up, and testimonies are given by those professing to have been benefited by the mission. And that's what they would do. They would have uh, people in the audience as witnesses, and these people would claim you know, miraculous healings by the healer. All of the faith healers did this. John Alexander Dowie did it. John G. Lake did it. Parham did it. Edder did it. They all did this. They all had plants or they would all have witnesses there in their meetings who claimed these great miraculous healings. But there was never any real evidence at all that anyone was healed. So anyway, back to the article. Um, so uh, a woman declares she has been freed from pain. The tenor soloist testifies that he has been delivered from an unclean spirit. A man speaks of recovered sight. So there's the witnesses there. The evangelist delivers an address as a uh, preliminary. He removes his coat and lets it fall to the floor. The address is long, and it's lacking continuity of thought. <laughs> The thread of the two stories he has to tell is at times almost lost in a mass, uh, in a mass of interpolated verbigo. Brothers, he says, I want to speak about the quickening power tonight. If sin and disease come in touch with the quickening power, they must cease to be. Christ didn't heal at the pool of Bethesda because some there had one eye on the pool. Lots of people have one eye on the doctor and the other on Jesus. God alone clears our eyes. It is a disgrace. Now, look at this. It is a disgrace for a believer to go to a doctor. And so like Dowie, right here, you can see 
just like Dowie, just like Lake, believed that going to a doctor was wrong. It was sin for a believer to do that, which is absolutely unbiblical. I mean, the Apostle Paul's companion, Luke, Dr. Luke, (laughs) was a doctor. I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Later, he says, people must be saved at this meeting. God must do something, and we call him to honor his word. The speaker sometimes breaks forth into song. I've stepped over Jordan, rolls out in most inharmonious tones. (laughs) Again, he speaks in some language which would defy any philologist to understand an unknown tongue. It is afterwards explained, hands up. Those who are the seed of God, he commands, and half the congregation obey. So I guess that is the interpretation of that tongue that he supposedly spoke. Mr. Wigglesworth enjoys a dig at the clergy. You preachers want the word, and then you will throw the library outside, he says. There's nobody got swelled hands except those who have swallowed the library. He related the story of a call to a farmhouse near Grantham, England. A young man had been bedridden for two years. After a glance at him, the evangelist ordered that the clothes of the sick man should be put out to air. Now look, right here, rebuking that young man, I laid my hands on him in the name of Jesus. What's he rebuking him for, for being sick? Rebuking that young man, I laid my hands on him in the name of Jesus, and the room was filled with the glory of God, and soon he was walking about dressed and crying out, Father, God has healed me. He's a preacher on the primitive Methodist plan today, shouts the evangelist triumphantly. The congregation, now a little bit worked up, responds with glory to God, praise God, and with moans and groans rising and falling crescendo like the wind amongst the trees. You who are saved and want to be saved, and particularly the whole congregation, stands holding up both hands and singing the while. And this is a prelude to the chief business of the evening. We want to make an exhibition of God's glory, says the evangelist. Those who have tickets for healing are requested to hold them up, and about 50 are displayed. I don't understand the whole ticket thing. I I would have to do more research on that, but um, I don't think that uh, he was actually charging people for healing. At least it, the, it that's not the, what the report here says, um, because he did heal people without tickets. I, so I, don't, I have no idea what the tickets were about. I'll have to do some more research on that. But um, those who have tickets for healing are requested to hold them up, and about 50 are displayed. Two men and, and a woman who have no tickets are first called forward. The evangelist leaves a platform and takes up a position by the front seats. Everybody can be healed, he announced. And these people will go away without pain. He touches the first person on the side and commands the evil spirit to leave him. And so right here you see that um, just like Dowie and Lake and Bosworth, these guys believed that uh, sickness and demon possession were one and the same. A person who was sick uh, was being either possessed or influenced by a demonic spirit. So... Uh, So he commands the evil spirit to leave him. The patient declares that the pain has departed and is admonished to honor God. A woman who says she has pains in the head, throat, and chest apparently receives no no relief, even after the anointing of her throat with oil. A deaf man has his hand swung about violently, but his hearing does not appear to benefit by the treatment. So, you can, I can, so I mean, it's not funny, but this is what this guy was known for doing. I mean, he would shake people. He would punch people. He would um, you know, just do violent things to people and say that I'm actually going after the demon. Um, so, yeah, you can see that right there in this par- portion of the article. Then follows a long procession of sick and uh, and sorry, the blind, deaf, dumb, and halt. They are urged to believe, if you have faith, you will be healed, they are told. But the emotional atmosphere generally generated at the revival gatherings is lacking. A few faces express hope, but faith is far to seek. The first three cases are treated without result. Then an elderly man admits that he feels the power of God. A woman lame for eight years is ordered to move her leg in the name of Jesus and to run up the aisle. This she does, crying glory to Jesus. A deaf girl is told to count to six. If she does, she is inaudible. 
A father holds up a son afflicted with spinal trouble. Lord, let this man see his son healed, is the invocation. And the parent is told to look for a perfect restoration. A young woman with hip disease walks away, shaking her head dubiously. But another girl, after being put through some exercises akin to the Swedish drill, declares herself healed, probably to make him stop. (laughs) Just make him stop. Okay, I'm healed. I'm healed. The treatment, apart from the invocations, is often violent. Okay, the healer clasps his hands behind the head of a woman and shakes her almost viciously. Folks, you never, ever, ever, ever see Jesus or the apostles doing this kind of thing ever in the scriptures. They just commanded the person to be healed and they were healed. That was it. There were no losing of healings. And in other words, a person didn't lose their healings. Um, and, And there was there were real healings. Healings that were able to be validated. I mean, the person immediately got up and walked, and the crowd saw it. A person rose from the dead, and the crowd saw it. These were uh, verifiable healings, and none of the faith healers have real, serious, verifiable healings. I'm sure some people did get healed, um, but nothing really significant, nothing with real, verifiable proof or evidence. The stuff that Smith Wigglesworth did, the violent stuff that Wigglesworth Worth did, that was absolutely not, not biblical in any way, shape, or form. Um, so anyway, uh, the healer clasps his hands behind the head of a woman and shakes her almost viciously. Decorum disappears in the smiles, which are rather encouraged by the healer. The last in the long uh, queue is a young man who is told not to share his life with the devil. Father, loose him, loose him, is the plea made with appointed hands. Those who have left handkerchiefs to be anointed press forward to receive them. The doxology is sung, and without visible exaltation, the congregation files out.